And because by the time, you know, all due respect to the, um, the police department, my dad was a cop, so I respect the police department. Mm -hmm. And doing that, and I used to be a police chaplain, so I worked with him. Right. You know, I worked with him. I used to run from him. Better run with him than from him. <laughs> <laughs> so, so saying that to say, teaching the churches and teaching those in the church how to protect themselves, because when the cops do come, it's all said and done. Mm -hmm. Your host, one of your hosts, Jamon Davis. I am the owner of Infinite Legacy Media. We are a media company that helps businesses connect with their customers through video. First of all, where are we at? Welcome to Survivor Startup. Welcome to Surviving Startup. Yeah, I just jumped <laughs> right in, right? That's probably what today. they love about it. Welcome to Survivor Startup. <laughs> <laughs> That's Jamon. <Javon. laughs> so like just said, how y'all doing today? I'm uh, Terry, the detailing guy. And we have today. Oh, it's gonna be one for y'all today. Some great host. We actually want to introduce ourselves. Well, my name is Reverend Willie Anderson. I am the owner and operator of my brother's Keeper Security Solutions. That's Red Willie hashtag Red with a gun. And I got one of my partners and, and co-workers with me. And you can introduce yourself. My name is Christopher Young, aka the infamous Mr. Lee. AKA yes. Minister of Defense. <laughs> Minister of Defense. <laughs> <laughs> um, willing trainer of um, men and women of color. Um, we just want to make sure everybody gets home safely. Nice. Mm. Nice. So we have a church coalition. And, and yeah, 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 almost, almost. <laughs> you got to rev, 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 rev with the gun. Rev with the gun. And the Minister of Defense. And Minister of Defense. I like that. So, what exactly do you do, Rev? Well, what I do is. Um, well, I'm proud to say we are the first black-owned gun dealership in Grand Rapids, Michigan. We own a um, black gun, deal gun store. I'm also a CPL trainer, firearm instructor, mm -hmm. and we teach real-world situations. We teach from our, um, starting with everybody in the family. We start um, training our kids starting at the age of seven all the way up to um, mm -hmm. whenever. We also ask to make sure they mature. We want to make sure that they mature and understand the concept we teach. We have women-only classes where we teach women how to defend themselves, mm -hmm. Not only just come in the store to get a gun, but the whole object is what what's the right weapon for you. Okay. We just don't want to put anything in your hand. And that's what my brother's keepers is. We started this because I truly believe our people perish from the lack of knowledge. And people of color, we do. We we either fear the um, the weapon that tool and uh, or we don't respect it. Mm. You know, we pick it up just to be using it. Definitely. So that's what we're here for. We're here for not just to own a gun store, but to teach and give that wisdom and that knowledge of that weapon that you want to get. Definitely. I love it. I love it. Um, one of the things that I think about, um, well, just from, because we've known each other for a little bit. We actually did a spring GR class together. Yes, sir. Um, always think about how do you balance that, right? Your faith and business, especially being a gun dealer. Right, like you don't see that every day. <laughs> like you, like you see people in the church with guns nowadays, the deacons and stuff. You know what I mean? But the rev is selling guns and teaching people how to shoot. Like, mm. how do you balance that with your faith? Well, first and foremost, not just the guns, though, no, but like the whole business. It aspect. was a calling. It was a calling. Um, somebody asked me how to get into it. Well, I've been doing security since I was 16 years old, and when I was living in Iowa. I moved from Minnesota to Iowa. When I moved to Iowa, I've been looking for a home church. I was doing security for one of the top colleges in Iowa, and I'm driving past, I see my church. When I went in the church, I seen some things that I was just doing wrong. They collect the offer, bring it back to the front door, and there was no safety or security there. So I pointed it out to the pastor. And while I was home, you know, I'm a man of God. I've been on my knees praying, and God put in my heart, my brother's keeping security solutions. And I'm like, okay, what do that look like? So he gave me a blueprint. You know, church security, teaching our churches how to be safe. Because when we look at churches and schools, they soft targets. Mm. People pick on them. What is that? People mm. pick on them because there's no weapons there. Mm. But okay, yeah. Side note. Mm -hmm. um, with that being said, when having your CPL, one of the places tell you is we can't go to church with that. Well, mm. so how does that? How do we? That works in two ways. One of the things is when it goes to churches, synagogues, and stuff like that, get permission from your pastor uh, or whoever in charge so of security. That's a loophole. They don't right. tell us that no. in school. No, the they don't tell us a lot of things in school and classes. They just say this is what you can't take. <laughs> right, right. And again, and, and that's because they don't want you bringing them. And because, again, 
the uh, the fear of having that knowledge, the fear of having that being able to protect myself. Mm. If I'm able to protect myself, I don't have to call nobody to come and help me. Right. And because I don't have to call you to help me, I mean I don't need you. Mm. Or that mean you may think I don't need you because of those things. Right. And because by the time, you know, all due respect to the phone, the police department, my dad was a cop, so I respect the police department. Mm. And doing that, and I used to be a police chaplain, so I worked with him. Right. You know, I worked with him. I used to run from him, better run with him than from him. <laughs> <laughs> so, so saying that to say, teaching the churches and teaching those in the church how to protect themselves, because when the cops do come, it's all said and done. Mm. Yeah, very It's true. all said and done, and it's too late. Right. So being able to say, okay, our church is not a security den. Our church is for people to come in to worship the God, or worship God like they want to worship God, and feel safe doing it. So now, as the head of my security of my church, my job is to make sure when you come in that the person that's coming in is not coming to harm, but to also worship beside you. Now, as long as you got the permission from the church or the security, you're allowed to have your firearm in here. Okay. You have to allow to have your firearm in places that say no weapons allowed. Just because it say no weapons allowed, I'm not breaking the law by going in with my firearm. Mm. It's their policy. Their policy. And because if they see it, they can ask me to leave out of the building because it's their policy. Yeah. I'm not breaking the law. It's just a trespassing thing. Correct. So now mm-hmm. that they ask me to leave and I refuse to leave, now, that, now I'm being breaking the trespass law. So when the cops come, I could be arrested because I'm trespassing. Mm-hmm. Not because I got my firearm, because it's, it's my right to have it. Yeah, mm-hmm. that makes sense. But so if the synagogue said, no, you can't bring it in, you come and worship, but that got to stay in the car, you got to obey their rules. Leave it in the car. Leave it in the car. Yeah. So, but yeah, there's a lot of, um, and again, it comes from lack of, knowledge. lack of knowledge. You know, we're scared of that word ignorant. Ignorant means lack of knowledge, mm-hmm. you know? It's a lack of. So when you get that knowledge and understanding, then you can say, hey, I know how to move in this round. Mm-hmm. And that's what we want to teach you, how to move in this round. We want you to be able to respect this tool. Well, think about it. You teach your kids how to use a fork, right? You just teach them how to use a metal object and put it in their mouth and mm-hmm. you walk away from them. You ain't worried about mm-hmm. them sticking their tongue or sticking it down their throat. They come back with a mouthful of blood or anything because you taught them how to use it. Teach them how to use a hammer. They don't take the hammer and turn the TV on because t- you told them what to do with them respect this tool, right? Right. They pass out scissors in school. How come nobody get a scissor stabbing incident in school? Because we told them not to run with it or point them at nobody, mm-hmm. right? right? We taught them how to respect that tool. Mm. And the same thing with the firearm. If I teach my kids how to respect that tool, they're not going to go pick it up or go using it willy nilly. Mm-hmm. Why? Wow, because they know how they know to respect, how to respect, that, respect that tool. It. And again, going back to every culture, <sighs> but the black and brown culture teach their kids how to respect how to that tool. Mm-hmm. Don't touch True. that. Leave it alone. Mm-hmm. But True. then now I'm curious. Mm-hmm. Why am I curious? Because mom said, don't touch it. Dad got one up in the drawer. They won't let us look at it. Why not? And now it's curious. Now it's curiosity. Mm-hmm. And once I put it in my hand, that curiosity can kill. Mm-hmm. But if I teach them how to Facts. use it, and I teach them how to deal with this tool, they won't go around picking it up. Well, think about it. You got kids at home. Mm-hmm. You ever touch your kids how to wash dishes? Now you can't get them to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you took away the curiosity. <laughs> That's a good one. You took away the curiosity. Yeah, right or wrong. Right. So when you teach them right now, before they want to help you keep the house clean, like that. Now you can't mm. get them to keep. Why? We took away the curiosity. And because we took away the curiosity, it gave them that respect that this tool is not to be used the way we're using it in these streets. Our kids gravitate to that because of the music they listen mm. to, the mm. TV shows they t- listen to, see, and think in that head. This is how I deal with the weapon. Well, I, I love I love video games. So I'm not bashing no video games or anything like that, but video games do program our children. Right. It's a program. Yeah. They yeah. sit in front of it six, seven hours a yeah. week or more. Yeah. Some of them sit in front mm-hmm. of it five, six seven hours a day. Yeah. And they get programmed. Yeah. So our job is to deprogram and say, no, that tool is not to be used in that capacity. You know what I'm saying? Call of Duty, Gears of Wars, not to be used in that capacity. It's used for hunting. Yep. They make it look like it's just they they fun and games. Funny games. Mm-hmm. That's what they do to the tool. Um before we go down this lane, because this is going this is the lane, this is gonna be like the lane we really going down like but i want to touch on this first so are you how are you deeply involved in the church as well yes yes so let's touch on that real quick before we go forward with that like what does that look like to y'all like business faith and especially in y'all business like how do y'all balance that faith speaking Mm -hmm. towards those people who might be entrepreneurs Mm -hmm. um and the christian yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Especially faith-based businesses. Because would you consider yourself a faith-based? Oh, definitely. 
Definitely. I was telling Chris, <laughs> I was telling Chris that um, day before yesterday. It's my brother's keepers, your first black owned Christian based business. One of the things is when it comes to anything, and you know, we use that title Christianese all the time and throw mm. it out there, and you're not doing what the Bible says. I'm not talking about what I say or wearing a title, it's what the Word of God says. The, Bible says. the Word of God. And if you say you're a born again believer in Jesus Christ, you have to go by the book. Bottom line. Mm -hmm. From Genesis to Revelation and everything in between. When it came to doing this gun store and making my prices, people come to my store and be like, man, that's that's cheap. No, it's inexpensive. And the reason being because when I was personally like, God, I don't know how to put these prices together. What do I do? The Bible told me, the Lord told me in, in, in my spirit, do not put my finger on the scale. What he was saying is don't be cheating people. Don't be raising the price too high. So the MSRP says this gun costs a um, thousand bucks. That's what the MSRP says. Well, if I'm getting this gun for this amount of money, and I can see here, I can sell it for this amount of money. I don't have to make it a thousand and one dollars. Mm -hmm. You don't. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Lord put in my heart as a Christian man. As a Christian man. And again, I don't sell everybody. Just because you walk in my store and got the right to have a firearm, I don't have the right to sell it to you. Why? Because again, it's not judging the book by the cover, but I'm a clinical counselor. I read people too. You come in my store smelling like marijuana, you're not getting one. Just like if you came here intoxicated, you're not getting one. And just because I have to protect those in my community as well as protecting um, me from you. Do that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. Because, again, I have to see it in your film. you intoxicated. You you got drugs, man. No, I can't give that to you. It right. don't mix. So as a man of God, I have to also be accountable not just to my, my business and my family, but to the community. And it's a ministry. Yeah. When people walk in, they hurt him. Amen. People just don't run in my store and get a gun just because they want a gun. Now, we get plenty of those. Now, do you use that discrimination wisely and not? So, what you just no, said. No, I have to correct your word. Not discrimination, discernment. Discernment. discernment? Yes. Okay. Do you use that not discriminating? Big, big time. Because big time. you get, like you just say, certain things with certain situations where you can make that choice. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times when we have that power, we choose... Choose choices can get iffy. Right. You get what I'm saying? Yes. And then certain times. Like, I'll give it to you. But I'm not, not giving you. it to you. Like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah you can have one. Little, <laughs> he my cousin, so uh, well, my no, cousin no, 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 gonna no. get this gun regardless. You know what I'm saying? Half my cousin can't get him anyway. <laughs> 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 no, no, no. Can I, can I, can I say something to you about that? Um, you asked a question earlier about as far as the belief system and um, do we go from there? And I would have to say yes. A lot of times, like he said, when someone comes in and they're in a rush to get a gun, before you put a gun in someone's hand, you put training into their mind. You know what I mean? You, we sit down and we ask them the questions. Okay, great. You, you, you believe you're mature enough for a gun? Great. Okay, may I ask a question? Why do you want a gun at this point? Okay. Have you ever fired a gun? Okay. Have you been trained to operate this gun? If the answer to, to one of those questions is no, first and foremost, I mean, okay, look at James 3. James 3 says, my brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we will receive the heavier condemnation. Okay? Masters can be substitute for the word teacher. Right. All right? So you're responsible for every single person that you put that tool into their mm -hmm. hand. You're responsible. Right. You, it, there's no break in it. There's no break in it. It's, it's no different than right now if a drug dealer gives somebody fentanyl. Mm -hmm. Right? What happens? They going back for that drug dealer. Right. Can you imagine having the power or having, like you said earlier, discernment, and you not using it. And this mm -hmm. person takes that gun, they go out and they wanna hurt that person, mm -hmm. but they miss that person and they end up hitting mm -hmm. a total innocent person. Mm -hmm. You know. So before you put that weapon into their hand or that power changer in their hand, you gotta put something into their mind. So that's part of your process. That's 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 that's, that's where process. the that's where the process starts. So is that where y'all do with everybody that come everybody in? Walks everybody in walks through. Yeah, because I I can go I can go to Silver Bullet. Yeah, they ain't gonna ask me no questions. Yeah. They gonna ask me no questions. They <laughs> they just gonna give me a gun. And just I watch I watch how people interact with people, mm -hmm. and I see certain people interact with this person differently. Mm -hmm. and then turn around and well, that, this that, person that way, and then ignore this person. Yeah. But, but that's like the one of the reasons I did it. Because, again, I got difference. that same discrimination. Yeah. No, no, they are discrimination. Yeah, I've been the and, and I got that. I got yeah. that. That's one of the reasons I opened up my brother's keepers. So when you walk in my store, you don't have that. You don't feel that. 
Okay. And like he just said, my discernment comes in, again, I, I'm, I do this for a living. I'm a certified clinical counselor. I got three bachelor's and a master's in behavior counseling. When somebody walk in my store, my first observation, okay, cool. You want one. What kind do you want? Why do you, why you want that kind? <laughs> why you need it? Yeah. What you need it for? Asking those little general questions give me a feel, and when they start talking, people start letting you know what's going on in them. Uh -huh. Now, as far as the discrimination when you smell like marijuana or alcohol, I be doing myself a disservice by planting a weapon in your hand because you came in, you disrespected me by walking in my store smelling like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Did that make sense? Right. Yeah, so because you walked in my store smelling like that, you already put an ant eh on you already. Because again, I don't tell them, no, I can never serve you. I just say, I can't serve you today because you smell like that. So, okay, that makes you sense. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, come back sense. cleaned up, hey, a different story. Yeah. But right now, I can't. Yeah. Now, because again, one of the things that Chris said is, if I put it in your hand and you go out and hurt somebody, I don't know who would do that. You know what I'm saying? Because any one of us got a capacity to do it. Right. But I can't say I won't sell you one because you might. What I'm saying is the observation of what I got right now. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I get mothers that came in. Well, her neighborhood she live in, they shooting and shit. She don't feel safe. So she want one. Okay, well, let me walk you through, like he just said, the training. Oh, because I just don't want to put one in your hand, like Silver Bullet. And I'm not calling them out, but these are the places I've been in, and they hand you the fire. Yeah, right? yeah no, they're not, they not, they not they giving you no. If you, ask, <laughs> if you ask, can you show me how to take it apart? They might, but... They right. just gonna give you the gun. They are gonna thing sell you the gun. I take you over to the simulator. Walk you through some stuff. Put a fire on me in your hand. I had a lady today, Hannah daughter. She they was over there. Mom just started crying because she never had one in her hand. This is a simulator. This is a training pistol. And as soon as she put it in, her hand, she started doing this and she started crying. Mm. She probably had some stuff happening. But, her but no, she's from she's she's from from Mexico. I'm from Mexico, and she just. Because again, growing up with them, around them, and, and the fear, mm -hmm. and that fear. But when I walked her through the process, she told me about I want the pink one. <laughs> because she got that process, and she understand, hey, this is a tool. Just like driving a car. When you first get in that car, and you get on that highway, and you see that 18-wheeler, you scared to death, man, that tire could crush you. Now you just <laughs> riding right past them. Why, because you built that muscle memory. You got that, you got that fear, that respect still there, but mm -hmm. that fear is gone. Yeah. And that's the same thing with this tool. The respect is there, but the fear is gone. And most women, like you said, as a man of God, my job is to say, hey, my people perish from the lack of knowledge. And as that guy to have that knowledge, how do I give it to them and restore them to better health? Because as a man of God, and then what the Bible says, we're allowed to have a weapon. A man that don't take care of his family is worse than an infidel. If you don't have the tools to take care of your family, even worse. Why? Because you're refusing to get the right tool to take care of your family. You know, and throughout the Bible, you know, David had a slingshot. David was the first sniper there was. He killed people. <laughs> he hit David upside the head with a rock. With a sniper. And that was his projectile weapon. My projectile weapon had to be a 30 under um, 9 millimeter. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Peter, in the Garden of Gethsemane, he carried a sword. You know, Slice we, off we, that boy here. Right, we, right. And we kind of get the, the scripture down a little messed up because we say, well, God, Jesus told Peter to put that sword away. A man that lived by the sword dies by the sword. That's true, but what Jesus was pointing out to Peter was, Peter, a man that lives by the sword, die by the sword. Them Roman soldiers come in, man. That's who live and die by the sword, a soldier. That's who lives and die by the sword. Roman soldiers, was, they live and die. So you're like, yo, that's like me and you say, yo, man, put the cop gun down, the cops coming, boy, get that out your hand. Why? Because they're going to wind up killing you mm -hmm. if you got that weapon pointed mm -hmm. at them. Jesus also said, put it back in your sleeve. He didn't say get rid of it. Mm -hmm. He had to put it back. He had his eye for a reason. In the and he walked with Jesus for three years. We never ever heard him about that sword or anything like that. But they used it to kill, um, kill the fish. They used it to skin the fish. They used it to go to the, take the money to the market, whatever they going, get the money and go home with it. That was their protection. Right. So as a man of faith, we have to, again, respect that tool, understanding that as a Christian, we're allowed to have that tool to protect our family. What is one of the biggest misconceptions that you think people have towards guns? That the gun is bad. That the weapon itself in itself is bad. Why do you think that is? We was taught that. <coughs> we was taught that this is a dangerous tool in growing up in our house, and growing up in the African American culture. Chris, you want to fill in? Why you think they so like? Why you think guns are <laughs> yeah, so taboo? Like, like we trying to take you back to that conversation. We have, <laughs> like, why is guns so okay. taboo in our community like they are? Because there's a consequence. You know, when you talk about taboos, for us, it was always a consequence, a greater consequence to having it than not having it. Um, as they were speaking earlier, they're talking about the Civil War. You know, we were down there 
we didn't have our freedom. We didn't have our mm-hmm. we didn't have our own lives under our own control. I'm about right? Civil War, so right? when right. you had di- when you when you look at the different militias and everything like that that they speak about in the Second Amendment, when these men who were the militias of their day, whether Virginia, let's say mm-hmm. the biggest militia there was, okay, mm-hmm. when they ran, okay. When they actually, we talking about before the Civil War, when they were in fighting the Redcoats and they decided they didn't want to be there anymore and they ran. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, what did they do? They enlisted us. Mm-hmm. They gave us guns. They gave us muskets to fight the war. And we are warriors by nature. We did a great job. Now you go afterwards, they say, okay, remember we made those promises to you guys. We were going to free you. We were going to do this. We were going to respect you. We were going to finally treat you like men. They said, we ain't going to do that. We ain't going to do that. And those guns that you guys use to make sure we have our freedom, we're going to need those back. And, and don't give them back, we kill you. Yeah. And that was the consequence. That was the law so, of having a gun. Since I've been in Michigan, I've met people 70-some years old. That will not touch a gun. So when is we talk? When is the Civil War? When was that? Yeah, when what does that year look like? like? Yeah, you're talking Civil War. Something like a couple generations. It, well, you talking about the Civil War is 1865. It ended. A few, a so few generations. Well, so we still you know, got older people that was yeah. probably dealt with people when they was kids who was got indoctrinated into that mindset of they made the people fearful of having guns mm-hmm. because of death. So well, you, then you pass that down. Well, you had you had slavery, you had black codes, you had Jim Crow. You know what I mean? Jim Crow didn't end to like the 1940s. And that's true. And that's mm-hmm. like three generations. You know, take, now think about that. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm old. I was born in 74. Mm-hmm. So Jim Crow was like 34 years before me. So my mother was born in 1951. My grandmother was born in 1914. So they know the Jim Crow. So they, they know it. And they, and they, understood, they, they mm-hmm. understood those rules that as a black person, if you got a gun, first thing they tell you, you're going to get killed. And white people yes. kill you. And that's what they yes. use. Some white people kill you. So we've been passed down with that. We've been passed down that as a bad thing. And then when we do hear about a firearm, it was always in a negative light. In our community, mm-hmm. so-and-so got shot. So-and-so got killed. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense because it's like, all right, first of all, you indoctrinating the children because you don't want to see your kids get killed right. for mm-hmm. doing the wrong thing, having guns, and then some person see them with it, oh, that black person got a gun, yeah. they're dead. Then you get that put into the minds, and then you fast forward like to around today's culture, and then you have all of these young people killing each other with guns, and then the people that's older, they had that indoctrination of having a different fear for a different reason, but now... It come full circle, so it's like now our kids killing each other with guns. Mm-hmm. Don't don't pick up a gun, mm-hmm. cause our kids is killing each other now. Mm-hmm. So it's like you have it from the back end, and then you have it from this end. But it's like when I mean I'll be looking at a lot of stuff mm-hmm. like conspiracy, call it theories if you want to. Mm-hmm. But we know they was dropping guns off in the hood. Well, again, you know what I mean. Gun. So you first you first you told us not to have guns, and then you drop guns in the hood. So then when we got them. In the, when they put gun stores mm-hmm. on all of these corners, you don't see it like that in Grand Rapids because it's a different kind of city. Mm-hmm. But if you go to different places, you'll be surprised that you'd be like, whoa, like, like for real? <laughs> it's can like I, that, I, you know what I'm saying? Can I, can I ask a question? <laughs> like, when you guys first, I'm, I'm just making an assumption. Yeah. And may, may, let me ask the question first. Mm-hmm. Does everyone at the table own a firearm legally? Correct. Yes. Yes, okay. So... Answer that on the radio phone legally, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> the, 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 okay. So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume <laughs> this guy. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, I own my We can edit that out, edit that out right there, Mark. Um, so let's say this way we all had to go at one time to a gun store and we all walked in. We all have that feeling of, I know when I came, when I moved to um, Michigan, I went into a firearm store and they, uh, here, take this, the trigger pull, it feels like this, the reset feels like this. No one ever said, hey, listen, um, you might want to get a CPL. You might Mm -hmm. want to get some more training. Before you even pick up that weapon, you might want to understand how that weapon is going to affect you. And we ain't talking about as a man. We're talking about as my skin color. Let's 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 talk about the elephant in the room for a second, yeah. can we? My skin color says, okay, if I point this weapon at someone who has the same pigment, I get one charge. 
if I point this weapon at somebody and fire that has a different or a lighter, let's say lighter pigment than myself, has a better background mm -hmm. than myself, I'm going to get a different charge. Mm -hmm. And we're talking nice. about as soon as you pull that, that trigger, you're looking at the average starting $65,000. You're not getting that back. Mm -hmm. You're not getting that back. So when we talk I'll about elaborate on that, That's okay, lawyer fees, lawyer fees, so lawyer fees, fees. Yeah. yes, yeah. 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 Most, <laughs> it did. I mean, you're you're talking about how many people can literally pull sixty five thousand dollars, you know, out just to start just to start the case. This is not saying you spend sixty five thousand dollars and you're going home. We're talking about sixty five thousand dollars just for me to show up mm -hmm. to say during your arraignment, I'm going to be here for you. Well, we don't have that fear. We, we really don't teach our kids the fear of the consequence. You know, our generation dropped the ball, and my mom's generation dropped the ball as far as our kids. Our kids, and especially in the African-American community, and most teenagers these days think participation trophies exist. <laughs> You know, you showed up, you should get a reward. You woke up this morning, you should get money. You, and, and, because, and because we allow them to do that, and don't give them a consequence for their actions, they figure, hey, if I pull this trigger, what's the consequence? I heard about it, but I don't know what it is, and it's not real. And again, one of my biggest concerns is we're not allowed to teach our kids these things in the school system. You know, that weapon is a tool, period. It's a tool. Let's talk about the it's consequences. It's a tool. Well, well, I mean, I am. Again, it's a tool. And if we can teach our kids how to respect this tool, they don't have to worry about that consequence. If they pull that trigger, like I said, the universal rules, four universal rules. Number one, treat all, gun, all weapons as they always load it. Number two, never point the weapon at anything or anyone unless you're willing to use it. Number three, keep your finger off the trigger. And number four, know your backstop. What are, every bullet that come out your firearm got a lawyer attached to it. Mm -hmm. Saying that to say the consequences of this, like he just said, Every time a, a young black man in this community load up that firearm to take it outside with him, he's not thinking about shooting another um, person of a different pigmentation. He took him out shooting somebody with the same color, the same way he looked like. He will even start sweating um, bullets if he even thought about shooting someone outside his, um, his own um, um, race. So he loading that up to go harm his own community. We're not telling him, once you pull that trigger, son, that's the rest of your life in prison, behind bars, never to get out. We're not telling them that. We're not educating them on that. We're not educating them on, hey, yo, you may be young and think because I'm young I can get, no, that's not escape. Mm -hmm. And they, um, they they lock you up on purpose so you can be a part of that system. Mm -hmm. I go on um, Silver Bullet or any one of these other stores and say, hey, listen, I want to get a firearm. Hold you, I'm 21 years old. Sure, here you go, fill out this application. I fill out this application, what kind of gun do you want? Well, I want a Draco. Well, nobody asks you why you want the Draco. Hey, that's a $1,300 gun, here you go. You got the $1,300 plus tax, I'm gonna give it to you. Now this kid got this weapon, they never showed him how to use it, they told him how to use it, what's the consequences for using it? Well, let's go with a hand pistol. They go get a pistol, I get a one a Glock. He get a Glock. Now, Michigan is an open carry state, meaning if I put my weapon on, as long as they can see it, I can walk freely around with it. However, they don't say if your T-shirt covered just a little bit of that mm -hmm. weapon, you're going to jail. Mm -hmm. If you decide to sit, sit in my car on the passenger side with your weapon on you, we both can go to jail, but you're definitely going to jail. They don't tell you those things. They don't say, son, let me show you what you can do and what you could do with this firearm. That's one of the reasons that's a penalty. I got my weapon. I think I'm doing the right thing with it because I'm legally with it. I'm carrying it with it. They don't tell them, hey, if you put it here in your own waist and because so, I can see it, that's still considered concealed. you concealing it. Concealed me, open carry me, and it got to be in the outside the waistband holster. Fully, fully visible. But do, you, fully visible. But do you think that's why here in Michigan, I don't know other states because I'm not from other states. Mm -hmm. You think that's why here in Michigan you can just go buy a gun without that questioning because it's open carry? Well, you do. Or that, do you think that's just... That's pretty much any state. Just any state. Any state. I, pr I truly believe that because most, most mm -hmm. gun stores are in the business of selling guns. Mm -hmm. My brother's keeper's in the business of educating. Mm -hmm. The gun difference. store, the gun mm -hmm. store came about mm -hmm. proud of because every time I was training a class and I trained over by the grace of God over seven, 800 people in this town. But I was saying, go to different stores. Go to Dunham's, go to Dunham's, go to this store, go to this store to get your firearm. And I was telling my wife, I'm like, yo, man, we need to find out how we can do it. Because, you know, as entrepreneurs, we mm -hmm. said glass ceilings. We said glass ceilings. 
And, and again, and the people in the community, uh, um, in my community, couldn't tell me how to do it. So I'm like in my prayer class, okay, Lord, you put this mm-hmm. on my heart. How we do I just talking about something like that today. Mm-hmm. And when I asked God, God opened up the door for a guy that I did my training with. And he's down there on um, Muskegon. And he's like, yo, brother, come on down. And he walked me through every bit of the process. And then I, when I was doing it, I'm like, man, this is simple. So you have your license where I can send a gun to you and yes, get my yes, gun sir. from you. And yes. I'm a certified oh, FFL, FFL dealer. So I'm a federal nice. firearm licensing company. I so you know you're trying to figure that out. Like, if you brought so a, many if, people making so much money, how can I do it? <laughs> right. If you bought a firearm from one of those online stores, online. you can have it shipped to me, but you still got to go through the background check. Yeah. You got to go through the background check. The process mm-hmm. is $35, and the weapon become yours. One of the things also, you know, when we talk about consequences, consequences mm-hmm. with that firearm, you end up getting a felony. Or you did something in your past and you end up with a felony. One of the things that the community don't tell you about that either is that you can, if you got a felony, you can get your rights back. You can get your rights you back. That, they don't tell you. People tell you you got a felony. It doesn't matter what kind it's of felony. It's over for you. The only felony that you can't give back, your firearm back, if you, you committed a crime with the firearm, or it's a federal crime. Them the ones you can't get back. Feds ain't gonna drop it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Unless you get a pardon from the president <laughs> or the governor. But they ain't gonna drop it. But um but the the, the um felony of marijuana, um, or drug possession. Those things like that because they <coughs> old and they died out and then since they got every dispensary on every corner, they can't hold you hostage yeah. with something they made legal now. So they so a lot of people don't understand, hey, I can get my you mean tell me I can get my life back? Because, again, it's, it's dangerous in this world. And I'm not putting the weapons in your hands just for you to go out and hurt nobody, but to be safe. Smart. Mm-hmm. You want to be safe and smart about it. And that's what, like I said, we don't just, you come in my store, you're not just getting a firearm. You're going to walk out with knowledge. Even if you decide, I didn't want one because yes. really told me now and I'm scared. <laughs> but I'm teaching you, hey, listen, this tool is for survival. You said it yourself. You know how to hunt. God forbid, man, if it was one of those um, movies like um, Will Smith, I'm Legend. I'm legend yeah. If I'm a legend, it happened right tonight, man. Our kids will go over to the monster side because they don't know how to hunt. They don't know how to, they don't know how to plant. And the Uber Eats ain't going to be around no more. <laughs> so how do we teach our kids to survive? By giving them these tools, teaching that this tool is called a fishing rod. Let me show you how to fish. Give them the tools. This tool is a hose. Let me a hose. Let me show you how to dig up the ground and plant seeds so you can have your vegetables. This right here is a rifle, a hunting rifle. The AR-15 is to use to go shoot that deer or shoot that animal so you can eat tonight. Mm-hmm. That's what this tool is for. And what's this hand tool for? This hand um, gun is for protecting me after I do these things. I'm home with my kids. And the truth don't want to come in and hurt my family. Well, this is what this tool is to stop that threat. To stop the threat. Mm -hmm. We're not shooting to kill nobody. We're not. That's not my intent. My intent is just to stop that threat. Keep them from hurting us. And that's what we're teaching our kids. Because, again, if we can get into the school system and educate them Mm -hmm. about these four rules, educate them about if you see it, man, this is what you want to do around a firearm, and this is what you don't want to be around a firearm. You don't want to be playing, pointing at each other, playing with it, man, because it can accidentally or accidentally on purpose kill somebody. I have a friend whose son got shot, actually, through the grace of God, he survived, but it was for that same reason. Kids not understanding, playing with guns, pointing at them, shot them. Right. And again, my daughters are 16 years old now. We started out when they was 13. If you put a firearm in front of them right now, they know, how to, um, they know how to disarm it, they know how to make sure it's safe, and they know that, hey, don't touch that, that's not ours. Mm-hmm. Not, we don't play with those, because they know how to. Mm-hmm. They know how to use it. Now, one of them don't like it, one of them, she like using it on the AR, she love that. But the pistol, she like, yo, I, I no, that's not her cup of tea. However, I'd rather for you to have the skill and never need it, than need it and don't mm-hmm. have it. Dude, mm-hmm. I got exactly. a spare tire in my truck, but I got AAA on my phone. Who do you think I'm calling first? Right. Mm-hmm. Why? Because AAA can't get to me. Now I got to change the tire myself. Mm-hmm. But I know ha- I have the tool and never need it. And rather than have it, I mean need it and don't have it. Yeah, definitely. So, so how do we give that knowledge to our young people? So I went to uh, pretty much all white school. I was the only black kid in my school. There's two of us, actually. And when I was in middle school, they used to give out classes, or not classes, but after school, it was like, learn how to hunt. The hunter safety course. Hunter safety course. Mm-hmm. 
Do we have that in Grand Rapids? The, the sad part is we and don't have this. I we came up in GRPS, so I can do tell we you. Have that? I ain't never seen it. We, like we, we don't have them in none of the black How do we schools. get that? First of all, do we want that? We want that. We know we want that. I think that. we should have that. You want to say something? Oh, I was going to just say real simple. It's our responsibility. Let's say it that way. All right. Mm -hmm. um, if we don't have the knowledge as adults, all right, we need to get out there and get the knowledge. Right. Um, when we sat down earlier, we was talking about the whole gun club theory. If you look at most gun clubs, what they're, what they're teaching people is, OK, we're going to go out on a Saturday. We're going to you bring your ARs. I'm going to bring my pistols. We're going to somebody have a shotgun and we're going to shoot down range. That's what we're going to do. It, no, it should be more like you said before. Let's get some hunting in. Let's get some hunting skills. Let's get some trapping skills in. Let's get some growing, some, some farming skills in. You know, Because it's not about two extremes. And I think that's one of the things I saw over the weekend. I was doing a lot of studying. Most clubs, it's, well, when they come for us, keep in mind who, when we, who are we talking about when we say <laughs> they. Because you have, and like yourself, I actually grew up in a school that was 98% white. OK, never. I was never called the N word one time. Me neither. Never. No, never disrespected. I can go to like 100 people's houses right now, spend night. the night. You know, what <laughs> I mean, if, they're, they're not, if, if my house burnt down, they're going to come and help me build another house. Right. You know, and it's you, you find out real fast that you have extremes in life. Uh -huh. You know, you have people. Well, because they're coming, we got to do that. <laughs> and they're scared <laughs> and they're acting out of fear all the time. However, we have so many millions and hundreds of millions of people in the middle that, listen, brother, if you need me, I'm there for you. Uh -huh. All I'm asking you is to give me a chance. Aren't we saying that to everybody? Mm -hmm. Like, That's listen, let, can, 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 can I, give, can I give, give you a lending hand? Can I help you? And there's so many people, different pigments, different colors, different th cultures, that when you need them, they're there for you. They're just saying, just give me a chance to help you. But all those people on the extreme sides, they're scared because they didn't have an opportunity and he never made a way over to shake somebody else's hand. Well, and then fear, mm -hmm. again, fear comes from, going back to the, thing, the word of God, all people perish from the lack of knowledge. Fear keep me from getting, the lack of, getting that knowledge. knowledge. Getting that understanding. Because one of the things I look at, when I look in the mirror, I'm looking at my shortcomings instead of looking at my potential. Mm -hmm. And since I ain't looking at my potential, I'm not going out there and ask, yo, who can train me to do this? You know, and like you said, do we want it in the schools? It's not about oh, do we want, we need. We need. Our schools put everything in the school system that we don't need. Yeah. But then they don't put the things in we do need. You know what I mean? If, I, if you can tell my child that his pronoun is he, they, and it, why can't you tell my child, hey, that tool is used for this and not mm. that? Why can't we do that? And that's, that's all I'm asking, you know what I mean? And again, you say we can't, they don't teach it at home because they don't know it at home. Mm -hmm. And I can't give it, I'm working what's in my toolbox. Mm -hmm. Whatever the tool I got in my toolbox, that's the only thing I could work with. So if I'm missing a screwdriver or a hammer, I cannot take a, um, I don't got a screwdriver, but I got a screw in that wall, need a screw to go in that wall, I'm gonna use a hammer. Wrong tool for the job. But if I go and say, hey man, I need a screwdriver. Can you show me what it is or tell me what that is? And he show me what it is and tell me what it is and say, hey, this is what you give, this is, how you, this is what you use for that tool. Now I got a tool in my box. Mm. And since I got my toolbox getting nice and full, I got a lot more things to work with than I did before I started off. Yes. We got to realize, hey, listen, I don't know this. How I go by getting to know this? Mm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And again, that's what we do at My Brother's Keepers. My Brother's Keepers do not just say, hey, like I said, here go a weapon. I can get you any weapon if you want because I am a licensed firearms dealer. And we got distributors. We got a website. You go online. But the thing is, the bottom line is the educational piece. When it comes to firearm safety, and I want to add this about the law portion. Mm -hmm. When it comes to firearm safety, there's a law. The law is set up to say, what can I do with this firearm or what can I do? We got what we call the, um, the use of the force continuum. The force continuum is a continuation from no force all the way up to deadly force. The law in Michigan says any force used got to be reasonable for the situation. Got to be reasonable. The first and foremost force I like is no force at all of retreating. Mm -hmm. I'd rather avoid it, walk around the block, go around two corners to get away from you than having a competition, mm -hmm. and then I have to be forced to use my firearm. Mm -hmm. Avoidance. De-escalation. Yo, man, you got that. Walk away. I want to say this, and I'm saying this as clear as possible. The cemetery and the jails are full of pride. 
When we let our pride get in the way, we do crazy stuff. You said this about me, I gotta go get my weapon. Mm -hmm. You call me this, I gotta go get my weapon. Mm -hmm. You put your middle finger up at me, and I asked us this before, what do that mean, what the middle it? finger? And, mm -hmm. and we know what it says it means, but who said that and why I gotta believe that? Mm -hmm. Why did it offend you? Wait, why did it offend <laughs> you? Because you allow it, you gave yeah. it power. You the one that gave it power, that's why it offends you. Somebody stick their middle finger up at me, my grandmother said that's their IQ. Because again, that takes away the thing. That takes away the thing. But you gave it the power. That's the reason you got offended. And because we allow those little offenses, now we spend in prison time. Only heroes are sandwiches. Pride, man, gets in the way. And if we could teach our kids that what that law says when it comes to reasonable force and deadly force, man. Reasonable force is any force I use to stop that threat. Deadly force is anything that I use to could have or may have taken a life. And there's consequences. There's consequences. You know how teenage kids got these guns legally and they're flashing them and, and, and breaking the law. They're pulling them out and waving them, breaking the law. And they have no clue that they're doing that. You know, you get on the video and you shaking the gun and all that and putting yourself out there saying, hey, look, I'm over here. Because mm -hmm. again, we didn't teach them that these are not toys. These are deadly weapons. If I can say, I mean, Grandmaster Jay literally got seven to eight years in prison for brandishing. brandishing for brandishing. And this is the leader. Mm -hmm. If anybody should have known, I shouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. It should have been the guy yeah. who everybody else is looking to, <coughs> to say, can I do this? But our leaders don't know. True. I'm teaching leaders all the time. I mean, mm -hmm. think about it. We, 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 I was just speaking on the, the extremism, right? You're going places knowing that there's going to be some heat. Where I'm taking, not only am I going myself, it's, it's, if I make a bad choice as a 49-year-old man, it affects me. But the moment I take mothers, brothers, fathers, and sisters into a situation heavily armed, not knowing if one person fires, everybody else fires. Mm -hmm. Look at the insurrection. It wasn't every, I was four blocks away from that. Literally in DC at the pharmacy. You look down the street, it looks like a normal DC thing. Everybody's protesting. I got back home and he said, Washington DC and Virginia are closed for the night. Mm -hmm. You couldn't go anywhere for three days. Mm -hmm. Why? Because somebody else, we had nothing to do with it. Somebody else made a decision for everybody else. That's what, that's what we have to do as far as weapons, as far as training. Be fully aware who's making your decisions and how their decisions are going to affect you and your family for the rest of your life. Because those people are going to prison and most of them, the, the people that were in the back had no clue what was going on. They just, oh, we, they let us in? Let's run in because everybody else is running in. And now they're getting charges. Everybody up front knew what was going on, but everybody else was just acting a fool. We all have a bad day. We all have a bad day. We're, we're you know what I mean? We can be influenced. You got to watch your influences and who your influence serves even more. Definitely. It's totally mm -hmm. different. It's totally oh, different. Don't go with that crowd. Don't go with that crowd. How many times have you heard? Don't meet your friends. <laughs> don't meet your friends. <laughs> Mama, you just don't know. <laughs> yeah, them, them my boys. They got my back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, your yeah, boys sitting on the couch while you sitting in the cell. Yeah. I wanted to ask a question. Um, So let's say I go by... Let's say I go get my CPL. From my brother's CPL. From my brother's CPL. At 3100 <laughs> Division. <laughs> but, um, right, and I come into a situation just going towards consequences. And then I go get into a situation where I have to use my firearm, right? Mm. And I do everything that I was taught right. Mm -hmm. What are the possibilities? Like, all the way from lawyers down down the line. Like, mm. even not, we are not even talking about people using the wrong, people mm. using the right. Mm. What, what are, are the you, things? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What was the question though? What were the, so what are the type of consequences that that I may be looking at if I'm forced to use my firearm? Let's say we get into an argument. Depends on your words. You pull. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, what? What? Let's not go into the scenarios. We're not gonna go into no, the scenarios. scenarios right, no. Let's just say I did everything right, mm -hmm. but I still had to shoot you, mm -hmm. right? 
what is the possibilities of the consequences from that? Because people think just because I do everything right, it's all is, good. One of the things we got to understand according to the law, it's not about what happened, it's about what the prosecutor could prove, period. You can do everything right. You can say everything right. But if the prosecutor can find a little doubt or a little leeway to say, hey, I can prove to a jury that you didn't do anything right or you didn't do it wrong, you're going to prison. You're going to prison. The thing, the most important thing is to have that right attorney. That's How do you prepare thing. for like that? Well, it's again, thing. it's another, it's another plug, asked. dude. <laughs> I'm glad you asked. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I would say retaliation. What does that mean? By, okay, don't know you. We get into an argument, right? Well, I'm not the aggressor because I wouldn't be the aggressor while I'm holding a firearm, okay? Or have a firearm on me. I do everything right in that scenario. Unfortunately, I do have to take your life. You know what I mean? I, I'm shooting to stop the, stop stop the threat, okay? Mm -hmm. And consequence of that is you perish. How, are you, how is your family going to feel? Is there anybody here right now, if somebody called and said your brother, your sister, your mother, or somebody was murdered, because that's mm -hmm. what they're going to tell you, or killed in an altercation, how many people's first thought would not be, Somebody got to go. Mm. Somebody got to go. Now, keep in mind, when we talk, we, we talk about these children. Mm. These children, that's their first thought. That's their first thought. Because they, in their minds, people mm. still respawn yeah. later on. You know what I mean? I'll do it now, but they'll be back two weeks from now. Mm. But that doesn't happen. So, retaliation. I mean, how many, how many funerals have been shot up? Well, you, you think in retaliation, but in the same token, going back to your original point, no matter what you do right, it is consequences. You can face time. Mm -hmm. Until you you know, the consequence of the, the, the world says, uh, the law system says you're innocent until proven guilty. <clears throat> you're guilty until you're proven innocent. Because if I was innocent, you wouldn't be locking me up in a cell. You'll come back and say, we found you guilty, tell him to go to jail. You hold me until you find me innocent. Then mm -hmm. you say, Mr. Innocent, you was proven innocent, you're free to go. That's so I'm happens. still going to do that jail you're time. Gonna, and well, you're going to do, you're going to go to jail. This is not Hollywood. When the cops come on the scene, and I've been to plenty of crime scenes, that was my job when I worked for the Minneapolis Police Department. When the, when the cops come on the scene, we took them playing, I mean, we took them street clothes mm -hmm. officers. When they get to the scene, the scene becomes a crime scene. No matter what it was, death, um, accidental coups, um, um, protecting yourself or suicide, it's a crime scene when they come. Their job is to gather information. That's why we tell anybody in my class, don't talk to the cops. Don't say nothing to the mm -hmm. cops. You don't say nothing to the cops or the detectives. You talk to your lawyer first. Because, again, anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. Once you did that shooting, your whole body changes. Adrenaline going. When that adrenaline start rushing, you start getting what we call tunnel vision. Go from tunnel vision to, um, to audio um, to diminished sound. Um, then you go from audio diminished sound to lost memory, false memories. All these things happening at one time. Can you explain that? All of that, well, what you just said. When we go through, um, it's called um, the violent, uh, the violent encounter and the aftermath. The aftermath is after I had that encounter and I took pulled that trigger. Right before I pull that trigger, I'm pointing my fire on that adrenaline kicking anyway. But as soon as you pull that trigger, boom, everything stops for you. Everything is incoherent. Everything is just totally, I'm, I'm, I'm looking, but I'm in shock. I'm in total shock. You may not realize you're in shock, but you are in shock. All the blood went from your um, from your head, your um, exteriors, your toes, your fingers, all to your major arteries. And because of that, that, that blood is pushing. All that, your heart is pounding. You sitting there thinking you know exactly what's going on, but you're confusing. Because again, all your perception is gone. Your clarity is gone. Your audio perception is gone. For instance, if the cop asks you right now, say, well, sir, how many um, times you fired your gun? Well, I only fired it three times, but according to that magazine, it's 10 bullets missing mm -hmm. because your audio exclusion. You know what I mean? What was he wearing? Well, he had on a jean jacket. Well, he got on jean pants, not a jean jacket. Visual distortion. You know, um, what was the time? Well, it was around lunchtime. Well, it's 2 o'clock now, sir. Did you do this about two hours ago? Because all that is happening at one time, and we're not perceiving it as real time because for us, real time is just not moving. Not moving. So 
because of that, and we start talking to the police, it's just like this. Me and you get into an argument, or you get into an argument with your loved one, your wife, you want to go tell your friend first before she get to tell him because you want your side of the story out. And then they're like, well, that's not what he said. But again, I'm telling my side of the story because I want my side of the story to be known so I don't get in trouble. It don't work like that in the shooting because your side of the story is not exactly what you lining it up to be. Because after you have time to process, after all that adrenaline dump comes down, the endorphins set in, you're exhausted. Once that exhaustion comes out, and this could take up to 48 hours, now you start getting that visual clarity back. Now you start getting some of that memory back. And now you sit there and try to go change a statement where you said you only shot six bullets. Mm -hmm. No, it was eight, man. I remember it was eight or ten. Oh, you changing your story, sir? You said you was at the liquor store at 10 o'clock. You, yeah. oh, <laughs> right. you know you done messed up, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 You know you messed up, right? That's what happens, and that's why... <laughs> You need to make sure you got the right lawyer. Mm -hmm. You need to make sure that you're in the process of... I'm supposed to have 60... What? You say what? Like 63, 68 Gs? Like off rip? Well, if you don't, because like you just said, in, in the real world, it takes up to, from 50,000 50, plus to even talk to a, um, a lawyer that do some self-defense shit. So that need me. I need to be oh. able to have that on standby or something. No, no, not only that. What about your um, bail money? All of that. What about the bail money? That's just for him. And you gotta, you gotta come to this bell bondsman. And you also gotta understand: as soon as a fire, you have assault, you have battery. But as soon as you have any type of weapon involved in it, it goes through the roof. And again, mm. going back to what the prosecutor proved, you mean you did everything by the book, everything by the book. And ain't no way heck you cannot say that it wasn't self defense. One Facebook page, one like to some kind of prejudice stuff. One certain anything that you put out there that can be misconstrued. Following it, extremists. Yeah, they, they're going to mm. use it. You know what I mean? Um, so, and that's his job, though. Yes. Prosecutor's job is to say, hey, you're guilty. That's his job. Bottom line is that's their job. Whether you're guilty or not, if he's taking you to court, he's taking you to court because he could prove that you're going to go to jail. And that's their job. Whether we like it or not, that's their job. And I don't want to, um, and no disrespect to any public defenders out there, but I don't want somebody that don't know what they're, going, what they're doing to handle my case. Of course case. not. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Court appointed so, prosecutors. Um, I got a lawyer on standby. Um, that's for another show. But I got a lawyer on standby. Um, because at the end of the day, I got a lot to lose. But one of the things I always try to teach people is avoid, 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 so you don't have that consequence. Mm -hmm. Some things you can. One, I mean, that's why they call it um, bad guys dictate to us. A bad guy don't pick up the phone and say, "Yo, Jay, meet me at the um, post, meet me at your bank at two o'clock so I can rob you." They don't do that. They wait till you coming out the gas station and all that. And there's always preparedness, always preparedness, always that's situation true. awareness. That's what my instructor telling me too. He said, "Be prepared to go to jail. Be prepared mm -hmm. to have some money. Make sure you got some money. Actually, I'm selling you this gun. Make sure you have some money for mm -hmm. a lawyer." <laughs> that's literally mm -hmm. what he told me. And again, mm -hmm. like, be prepared to go to jail. If something happened. Be prepared to go to jail. Mm -hmm. Be prepared for a certain amount of things. But I have a question with that lawyer and all that aspect. So, say I'm a part of the NRA. Okay. Isn't that supposed to, like, help me out somehow? Me and I'm color. I know that ain't a thing. <laughs> I know that. But, say, but with, for, the, for the most part... With the NRA well, and, and all they, that. They are designed, they, they are gun advocates. advocates. They are okay. gun advocates. If something was yeah. happening. No. 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 They, no. They are that's not what they, that, that's, that's not what they do. Okay. The NRA, like, as um, Rev was saying, are advocates. They make sure you have the right have the to carry the gun. That's what they do. But you have other companies out there, and, you know, I have my own company. Not my own personal like I do, but I have a company that I would use. Um, and it's based off of a few things. You know, um, one, I get to choose my lawyer, okay, because I'm going to reverse engineer. Okay. I'm, I'm going to say, go ahead, please. Let's throw that out there. Uh, okay. What company do you use other than the NRA? Do, you, do we can plug them? Can we plug them? Yeah, yeah, yeah you can right. plug them. That's what we're about. Use, I'd, rather well, use, I'd rather us people use us people than mm -hmm. well, going somewhere it, where not, you know, the, not even well, that. But the like, company that I use, um, my, my CPL training, I'm certified through the USCCA as a certified mm -hmm. firearm instructor. Okay. Mm -hmm. They also have liability insurance 
for if I, God forbid, had to use my weapon at home. Mm -hmm. Not only did they use the liability insurance, they got hours and hundreds of hours of training. That's what I love about the company, the training itself. Okay, and and what was the name of them? I'm sorry. The USCCA, the USCCA. US, United States Gun Association. Okay. Um, USCCA, if you Google it, they pop right up. Um, the reason I carry them, I deal with them on a personal level. And like you said, I called the lawyer up. One is right here in Michigan, right in, right in Grand Rapids. So they provide like the lawyers the and lawyer stuff, they, but you get to pick though. Well, you can, if you got your own lawyer, they said if you got your own lawyer, you can use your own lawyer. They're paid for it. However, nice. they got top-notch lawyers that does this for a living, does mm -hmm. um, firearms, um, any, any legal means, Bonnie not crimes. just with a gun. Any legal means of self-defense that I had to use, they protect me for it. Okay. If I got my little golden Switch doodle with me, if I got my golden <laughs> doodle with me, she jump on somebody and bite somebody, she might lick them to death, but if she bite them and helping me to, to live, they, she's covered. Mm -hmm. If I'm in the house cooking food or, your, or my wife, or she had to use a frying pan or something, like, she's covered. By any legal means of protection, they cover you. And the reason That's I say, great. and it's only um, it's from um, $29 to $49 a month. The reason I, I'm advocating that is because in, a, in our community, mm -hmm. and um, in the black American, black and brown community, we'll go spend money on Jordans, we'll go buy Netflix, or unless I got mm -hmm. your account. <laughs> they bought, they cutting that. No, <laughs> we, 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 we'll much. buy mm -hmm. those, but we won't spend that $29 or that $40, $49, just to save my life. Because at the end of the day, Going back to what we just said, bad guys dictate to you. Mm -hmm. And it could be 2 o'clock in the afternoon to 2 o'clock in the morning that you may, God forbid, have to pull that pistol. And, and I'm going to be straight up honest with you. If you come and ask your friends and family for money, they will give you money probably for help you get a lawyer. They're not giving you money to get out of jail. Mm -hmm. They're not putting the bell up. Yeah, well, we we'll right. put, we'll put money in your account, and when he get out, you got <laughs> but we we but you got to spend that time in jail. However, with the USCCA, and let Chris chime in, mean, they you post your bail money. It's two. It's a million dollars for bail for um incidentals. incidentals for fifty a month. Uh, huh? No, no, no. Just a million dollars right there. So if you need it, no, I mean for the cost of fifty. You talking about? Yeah, for fifty dollars a month. Yeah. Right. It's a million dollars for bail. It's unlimited money for your um legal fees. Mm. Unlimited. Mm. That fifty, that million dollars is for say if you got your weapon taken, which is going to get taken and they need to be replaced. Say if you have to miss work, they pay you up to seven hundred and fifty dollars um, a paycheck to help you, you know, sustain for work. If you need that spot cleaned up in your house, you ain't gonna want to clean it up. You get paid the people to come in and clean it up. So that's what that money's for. Um, and again, do I think it's worth it? Every bit. Of it. Like Every that. bit. Of it. What you think? Well, yes, company. I do. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I use the same company. And um, I actually went with the bigger package and not because of the things he just named but were great. They also have training. They also have situations. They have legal training. They have spot on training as far as learning to use your firearm better to make you. Once you decide to have the weapon, you also have to decide to change your mindset. You know, yourself. continually educate yourself. Can, you'll never know enough. You'll never be. I mean, everybody wants to buy a weapon. All of a sudden now they're John Wick. But we all forget. For, let, let, let's look at this. Can anybody be John Wick legally? Never. Why? Well, someone broke in your house. They left. What did they do? They stole your car and they killed your puppy. That's all that happened. They, they, they stole your car. They killed your puppy. So as soon as he went and tracked him down, he premeditated. Premeditated. Everything was premeditated. Keep in mind, he killed way more innocent people than he did guilty people. Right? But everybody gets the weapon, and all of a sudden, what do we want to do? We want to be John Wick. And that's not how this works. They want the camera this is, this, this, yes, this is the ultimate yeah, act right. <laughs> <laughs> this is the ultimate act right. You now have to be on your P's and Q's at all times. And that's what I tell people. Avoid, avoid, avoid. At the end of the day, you want to avoid. But like you were saying, though, the training is the most key fact. Yes. You come to my class and get your C CPL licensing. Eight-hour course, you get what Michigan say that you need. That would mean you get a little more. Um, you get the knowledge of what to say and what not to say, too, because, again, um, we can't use certain words and certain lingos that our counterparts can use and get away with it. Mm -hmm. So you need to know what to say and how to say it. Um, and, but also, we offer that continuous training. I offer defensive shooting one and two. I teach you how to use an AR-15. I teach you how to hold and use a shotgun. 
We teach you all these things because this is benefiting the whole household. Mm -hmm. You know, I could put one tool in your hand, but I want you to be equipped to use other tools. We teach you how to use your dominant hand and also your weak hand, you know, using your left hand. If you're right-handed, we teach you how to use that left hand. Um, teach mothers how to hold your baby at the same time and pull up a trigger. Mm -hmm. You know, so you don't have to put your baby down because you're trying to get away from this, whatever is going on. And that continuous training is so important. I get so many people say, hey, I got That's a firearm, true. but it's in the closet. I got a firearm, but it's in the end. Well, I got a firearm, I don't even know where it's at. Do you know where it's at, baby? I bet it can. We get those. They come in my store all the time. But my thing is, okay, you Somebody got told you they don't know where they're going to Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what did he say? What did he say? I act like this. I was like this. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He just said that. You like, I don't even know what it is. You know what's that, baby? She's like, man, it's in the closet. But, but he literally said that. But again, when we do need it, we don't have that training or that skill, and mm. we react, and we grab it out of impulse. Mm. Out of impulse. And God mm. forbid, we haven't shot it, we nervous, we pull that trigger, and miss, or you pull the trigger and hit the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Or you pull the trigger, and now you unconscious because you dropped and hurt yourself with it. Mm -hmm. So training is so beneficial, so important. It's not about just coming in, hey, I took out my, uh, my CPL, I took the class, I'm going to get my license, I'm putting a gun on my hip now. Mm -hmm. You put that weapon on your hip, the responsibility is a whole lot different now. Yeah. I can't get mad at you because you cut me off. I can get mad, but I can't be yelling and screaming mm -hmm. about it. Why? Because what you just said, if, if y'all arguing and you got the firearm and he don't, and y'all two arguing, you just as guilty as he is because you're not the innocent party no more. Mm -hmm. You adding on to that fight. You, you, you egging on. Now, if he's yelling and screaming at me and I'm not yelling and screaming back, I'm like, yo, man, whatever, dude, I'm just trying to get up out of here. I'm standing in this party. And because I'm standing in this party, I have a better way to walk away from this. God forbid if I had to use my firearm, then me say, woo, 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 going back and forth with him because, again, you stop being in this party. Does that make sense? And you don't, you, you want to be the innocent party, you know? Um... One of the scenarios I use is like if you're in a club or you're in a crowded area and it's a lot of music playing, a lot of noise, right? And the law says you got a right to defend yourself, right, from any bodily harm, any um, immediate death, um, bodily harm, or sexual assault. You got a right to defend yourself. I step on your foot. It's crowded. I walk past, step on your foot. When I step on your foot, you like, yo, you punk. And I'm like, and I turn around like, yo, what? And you shove me. Once you shove me, I pull my knife at you and I'm coming at you. You take your firearm out and you shoot me. Was you justified in shooting me? Well, I'll say no. Only because I've been in that class. <laughs> 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 and you too can have that knowledge. Right. I stepped on your foot. So. I stepped on your foot. No. I stepped on your foot. Okay. I pulled the knife out and you seen the knife and you pulled the trigger. Was you justified in shooting me? That's a tough one. Well, it's not tough. It, it, the real world is, according to the law, is no, you're not right because you started it. Yeah. Even though I stepped on your foot, it was crowded. I didn't hear what you said, so I'm leaning in like, what? Because you cursed at me. I'm like, what? Then when I did that, you put your hands on me first. And when you shoved me, you stopped being an innocent party. So even though you... No, at that point, wouldn't that make it a touchy situation? Because that what? Is that a what? Well, you started it. And when we talk about the law... The law says the only way I can pull that trigger if I'm the innocent party. Mm. And I stopped being the innocent party once I, number one, start verbal assaulting you. Number two, when I physically assaulted you, I stopped being the innocent mm. party. You have to stay the innocent party. Is there a way out? Can I walk away from this? And if I can walk away from this, I'll walk away. Now, the Michigan law says if I'm in my house, I don't have to walk away. I ain't got to leave one room to go to another mm. one. I got to deal with the threat right there. But if I'm in my vehicle or outside my vehicle and I can get in my vehicle and leave that situation, that's your job to leave. Get away. Because, again, you don't want to be, you know, you heard that old saying, well, if you have a weapon, you pull it out, you got to use it. No, I can use it just to walk away. Just to walk away. I don't have to pull the trigger. Mm -hmm. yeah. So a lot of that stuff we got twisted or we got trained the wrong way by TV. And like he said, John Wick was, a, man, a premeditated murderer. I think that kind of came from yeah. it's like you pull a gun on somebody, you know they're going to come back with their gun anyway. But again, so you I don't know that because most criminals mm -hmm. are cowards. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's why they use guns so much. That's why right. I feel. But then, then, you know they catch, I mean? then they try to catch me sleeping. They don't come up to uh -huh. me like John Wick and them. Doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> then that's none of that. They try to catch you sleeping. But that's where preparedness come into. That's what we talk about. Our gun club, my brother's keepers gun, gun community gun club. We wanted to train 
um, black and brown people to be prepared, be, you know, the readiness. Mm -hmm. We open to anybody and everybody, but we asking you, hey, sign up for the club. What, you get free training and paid training? You know, you have to pay for some of the training, but most of the lot of the training is free because I like teaching. Yeah. And I want you to have the education mm -hmm. to say, hey, I know how to protect my family. Hey, yo, man, come on, let's go out and grab these guys and go hunting. Yo, well, what we have? I, and I know as soon as you see somebody doing something a little bit the wrong way, that's going to turn to a long conversation. Hey, 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 come here, let me holler at you. Well, not a long oh, yeah, conversation. Yeah. No, man, hey, dog, you can't do that. Yeah. Next yeah. Yeah. No, I'm just saying how you talk. Because oh, yeah. once you get to talking, <laughs> <laughs> you can't. Well, hey, then, then if I'm saying, like, yo, man, don't get ready to talk. Put that, put that away, man. Stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, well, you want to listen, go back to the car. Right? <laughs> but again, yeah, and again, because it, it, it is. People walk in my store, man, they come in there for five minutes. They're in there for about an hour. At least an hour and ten minutes. Yeah. At but least. That's out, good, though. They yes. walk out with a Sometimes numbers. I walk in and I just walk into some stores and just the people that work at the stores mm -hmm. irritate me. Mm -hmm. Just the yeah. attitudes irritate yeah. me. So mm -hmm. I'd rather not. I'd go somewhere else and spend a thousand dollars. Well, well it's because a lot of times you go into somewhere, they make you feel like you're disturbing their break yeah you know like everybody's on break like. and as soon as you walk in it's like ah oh, yeah what do you want socks and then there. you go to another one yeah. and you're like hey this 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 and this oh yeah. we teach you how to show you this show you this i'm like why would i go deal with these people when i can exactly go somewhere that well, wants me here yeah <laughs> won't let you leave no <laughs> and like you say i feel cool <laughs> That's like that's like it. <laughs> but again, that, that and that's the whole object to my brothers keepers. We want you to come in, feel you're welcome. Mm. And when you walk out, we want to understand, let you know, hey, we feel and understand your pain. Mm. We understand why you're in here. You're coming in my store to get a firearm. You're not coming in here to say, hey, I want to make tea. Mm. You're saying I need something. I feel I need something to protect me and my family. I'm a single mom. I got two kids. I'm a single mom. I got three kids. My window was broken into last night. I never used a weapon before in my life, but I want one. My job is to say, oh, here you go. You got the biggest one we got in the store. No, my job is to say, hold up. Let me, I can, can I show you some stuff? Let me take you over to the simulator and put one in your hand and show you what you're going to be getting into. Mm -hmm. Because, again, let me show you how to load that. Because I gave it to you. You walk out the store. You just got a paperweight with some bullets on the side mm -hmm. because you don't know how to load it. But let me show you how to load this. Let me walk you through this process. And again, as a man of faith and as a man of God and as a kingdom-minded man, my job is to educate my community. You know what I'm saying? Definitely not with just firearms. I'm, I'm called to minister the gospel. But that gave me the opportunity to say, ma'am, can I pray with you first? Or after. Mm -hmm. lady, like lady just got her son killed a couple of weeks ago, and she didn't want one, but she needed one because she kept getting threats. Well, let me pray with you. Let me pray for you. And that's what I'm here for, that ministry aspect of it, man. Giving that I gift of safety. I love, I love that. I, I would send anybody to, what is it, my brother's, my brother's keepers, keepers? Because, yeah, that's what people need, that right there, specifically. Well, it's about money. Uh, it's about body, mind, and spirit, man. And if we take care of one and without the other two, they come malnutrition. We want everything to be healthy. We want that woman or that child or that mother or that father to be safe and healthy. And with this firearm, if she say, hey, this firearm could give me a peace of mind, my job is not to only give her peace of mind physically, but peace of mind spiritually. Mm. I believe that's what distinguishes it from the reverend, would you, the reverend to right, just being a gunslinger. Right. Because right. like you say, the gun doesn't... <laughs> and that's what it is. Most, yeah, most people just sling guns. Sling that's guns. what they do. Get them out the store. Guns. Mm. And that's their job. Yeah. Which is, I, yeah. I don't Which is their job. job. Yeah. That's their job. job. Mm. But God called me for but, a deeper purpose, though. You know, not just the, and, I, and again, one of the things you got to understand too, my job is not to flood our community with firearms. That's mm -hmm. not my brother's mm -hmm. keeping mission or motto. My, my job is to educate us about these firearms. That's the mission, okay. to educate. Now, we, we passing out free gun locks. They buy a gun from my store, we give them a free lock and show them how to use it. Nice. You know what I mean? Now, that cause also correlates with the community that I work in, with the community, different outreaches in the community. You know, they helping me with these supplying these locks and stuff like that. But we giving these locks out because, again, we don't want you to just have a weapon at home mm -hmm. and now you ain't got access to it. We want you to show them. We show them how to use it. Show them how to load it. Show them how to, hey, this is what this lock's supposed to do. As soon as you open it, you got your weapon ready access. Put this key certain way. I give them ideas where to put the keys at. Right. So you don't have one key. Your key's downstairs in the living room, but your weapon upstairs and you can't get access to mm -hmm. it. Well, put this key somewhere that only you're going to know. Teaching you 
And I'm talking to women out there that's coming in the store, they, they boyfriend can't get a gun, so they talking you into getting a gun. That's illegal. And I make sure I discern that. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't serve it to you. If he's talking about, nah, baby, get the Glock 45. Well, she ain't going to shoot no Glock. Dude, that's going way too big 45 for 45, too? Too way too strong for her. So who So you notice when that happens? You, you, it, you don't, it don't happen a lot. It, it may happen once okay. in my store. And... Because that um, is a thing. It is a thing. It <laughs> happened once in my store and I didn't sell. Okay. Because it wasn't the young lady buying the firearm. Mm -hmm. And the reason I know she wasn't buying the firearm because she looking at the pink one. And he want this and one. He want this one. Yeah. And he talked her into getting this one. Well, I know automatically, again, I've been doing this for quite some time, this gun is nowhere near her caliber. She mm -hmm. won't be able to use it. And if you, if you use any firearm that's going to hurt you, you're not going to use not it. You're not using it. It's not you're not going to go, man. I, 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 I shot that last time. Y'all yeah, just come and take me. Because that hurts. <laughs> <laughs> that hurts. But if she uses something or two that she's safe with, she know, hey, I can use it, then they gravitate to it. Do that make sense? Yeah. So again, and I say that because there's a lot of young men that use their girlfriends to get them, and they send her up for failure. Nah, no, yeah, she going to jail too. Oh, she going to jail. Yeah, she's going to jail. She going to jail. She going to jail. Mm -hmm. So, again. Don't even put your woman in that don't situation. Don't put your woman in that situation. Nah, man. You know, come in, come to my brother's keepers and we'll get you the right people. Because we got a guy. I got a guy, um, and I'm going to give him a plug, Victor Armory. Victor Army help guys get their license restored back to them. Help if you got a felony, right. he help you. Look up your report. Help you clear that. Where can, a whole blood where can they find him? Um, like you just say, the well, um, I don't have Victor's number on me right this minute, but if but you, just contact you know, my brother's keeper, brother's keeper and, and then you get you plugged you, in. Get you right on Victor's get you number, together. and Victor will get you together. And see, that's a lot of things people don't even know. You just, most people yeah. off rip think, oh, I got a problem. It's over. I can't, I can't get, get it again. Yeah. Well, that's what they want us to think again. As long as they can keep me and you in any kind of bondage, they're going to keep us in bondage. Yeah. Because again, they want me and you to be subservient to what they got. And as long as I'm subservient to what they got and say, you know what, man, I can't go this far because this person or this class of people keep immediate, that's a bunch of malarkey, too. Mm -hmm. No, don't get me wrong. They stifle us. But I learned to be able to go around that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's always a lesson. You, you have to. You have to learn how to do You got to because, again, only thing that hold me back is me. You know what I'm saying? You may put an obstacle in my way, but the only one going to hold me back from getting that obstacle is me. Well, they put that obstacle in there. Dude, look around. Can you get over it? Nope. Can you get under it? Nope. But you go around it, right? Go around it. Stop using that for an excuse. The felonies, as long as it's not a federal felony or um, a felony um, with a firearm, 95% of them or 98% of them could get dismissed. Okay. So now you know. Now you all know. Now you're in whole Yeah. <laughs> I like so it. if it's is there any thoughts like that you would want to leave um you know I both can answer this question with to somebody fire ass just guns like period leave it broad I'm the comedian so I'm like get a lot of them <laughs> um but be, be, but yeah before you do look for um in your community somebody who's going to let you know the the realest part of it of owning go, a gun ownership. And that's my brother's. That's, that's my brother's keeper solutions at thirty one hundred division. Literally, because um, I'm gonna just be one hundred. I've been. To, I'm a gun person. Mm -hmm. I go. I just be in all different stores, mm -hmm. communities, neighborhoods, and nobody teaches you that. Mm -hmm. So if you're saying this is what y'all teaching when you come to your class, you come to my store. You get your class in yeah. your store. You get this, and, and it's free. Yeah, yes. nobody, no store I've ever walked Could be getting on me for not charging, but it's free. Yes. <laughs> I was going to buy my wife a 380. Literally, no store I've ever walked into. Until, until I talked to you. I'm like, that. okay, my wife don't need no 380. It's just like, hey, mm -hmm. she need a 22. 22, she can keep squeezing. Something mm -hmm. cooler than this one I got right here. Because and it's cheaper to fire. It teaches you the, the ins and outs. Ins and outs, or just basic. Basic, yeah. mental basics, because mm -hmm. most of the time they say you should take a mental test before, which is, well, I mean, this is up, up for grass, but whatever. But like, <laughs> you mentally, physically check someone out before passing I, I have gun. to, I have to, because again. No one does that. I have to, because again, at the end of the day, like he just said, I'm responsible. Yeah, I like that. I'm responsible. I love I take my responsibility serious. I got into this business because I, I truly love my people. I truly want us to be educated. I want our children to be educated. I want them to understand, hey, I got a right to have this, mm -hmm. but I got a right to do it the right I way. I love that. I have to do it the right way. 
You know, my little grandson came home with a toy, a paper gun they made in school. First thing I said, why did you make that? What did you need a firearm for? Why you think you need one? And I said, what y'all playing? We playing cops and robbers. What would you the cop? No, I was the bad guys. Pop him upside his head. Why you want to be the one to go to jail and why die? <laughs> Seriously. That's, that's why the do mentality. Because that that's the mentality teach. we had. I got to be the bad guy. Why? The bad guy don't want to go to prison, jail, and die. Them the ones that end up getting in trouble. Mm. I ain't say you gotta be a cop, but be the good guy. Mm. Be the good guy. Don't sit up there and try to get the image that we already being promoted as and live that image. Mm. Your image is your leader. These young black kids gotta understand they leaders. Kings. Kings, Kings and queens. You got people following you and you leading them straight to hell or jail or you're gonna lead them the right way. And when you walk in my store, that's what you get, man. You get, that. you get that in my story because, again, it's my obligation as a parent, it's my obligation as a teacher, and it's my obligation as a minister. I I'm a Christian that happened to be a minister. I'm a Christian man that happened to sell guns. That title, Reverend, is not just a tag, hashtag sign. It is who I am and what I do. Now, hashtag bread with a gun because that's what I carry. I am a reverend <laughs> that carries a gun. So I understand this guy got a gun. <laughs> Matter of fact, this guy got more than one. But... I love the sport also. I love going to the range. Man. I love shooting it. I love the camaraderie. Like said, camaraderie. <laughs> yes. Fun. The competition. I, I, I said, I love guns to smoke. The it's smell of gun smoke. Oh! oh. <laughs> I came home and she was like, I love it. It's over. In the morning. She was it's like, over. <laughs> That's the first <laughs> thing I ask people when you take them to the range. You're you like, do you smell that? I love it. Smell like, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> and it's fun. It's fun. It's entertaining. It's stress relieving. Just need to you be know, my educated. wife would say to me, my wife said, what's wrong with you? Nothing. Go to the range. I ain't been to the range. <laughs> no, 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 she tell me. Go to the range. Get, get out and go to the range. Because, oh, again, it's, re it's refreshing. It, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's relaxing. And, and, again, I love shooting. But in my simulator, it also teaches real world. If somebody ran up in here, what would we do? That's what mm -hmm. the simulator teach you. Can I shoot? Can I not shoot? That's what the simulator teach. You know, and getting the CPL training is great. But getting that extra education to learn to carry Continuous it. Continuous education. C continue, mm -hmm. continue, continue. You know, you got your firearm, name your firearm. It makes it more closer to you. And it starts being education becomes more of a culture. Mm -hmm. Because everybody around you is going to react in a similar manner. You know, and that's one of the things that um, firearms needs more of, if, especially for us. It's culture. You know, you go out. Culture. Yeah. If, mm -hmm. if we all go out as men right now, right? And we're going to go get scraps and we're to, um, something to eat, and there's no liquor being served. We're going to carry. We, we all know if something goes on, like we all are paying attention. To, as Rev always say, we're counting the exits. And you I know? counted the exits when I came in. You know what I mean? We're counting exits. We, we 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 know we we know. <laughs> Every, everybody might not make it out, three. but all, us four, <laughs> we we, we up getting up out of here. <laughs> we getting up out of here. You know what I mean? We might we might be a little dinged, a little danged, but we all going home safely. Yeah. Definitely. And that's what the culture and, and is about. What, and that's the training, too. That's the, we also make sure, hey, you got those tools and knowledge when I'm walking into a restaurant. What I'm doing is, what are we looking for? What mm -hmm. am I um, examining? And again, it, it may seem crazy. I thought it was a little weird. I always do that. My kids asking that. Why are you always yeah. back in when you park? Yeah, that's that Smith training right there. I just did that, man. Mm -hmm. I need to get out. I need to get out. I need yeah. to get out. And back and out. And back and out. I might hit somebody. <laughs> I just boom, boom and just get up out of And it only take a couple more seconds. Mm -hmm. A couple more seconds to back in. And again, that's part of training. That's what you also get from the USCCA. Nice. You know, not putting stuff on the line. I'm on Facebook and I'm doing, hey, I'm vacationing in Florida. Well, he ain't home. Let's go rob him. You don't put stuff out there like that, you know? Yeah, do that one to two weeks later. Yeah. yeah I don't right. think people realize that. Like, you can, if you want to post your pictures, go come back home, that's be cool. home safely, yeah. then post them. Mm -hmm. I was brought up where my mom said, you don't put your picture online, you don't put your business in the online, street. You don't put business your business in the street, right? So I still, <laughs> to me, I still, I'm still that person. Mm -hmm. So it's hard yeah. for me to put anything. And, and again, we love, we 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 love social media, but it got to be used the right way, also. Because mm -hmm. it is your permanent like record. Right here, I appreciate yeah. what you guys doing with the startup. This. Yes, I, I, especially you, young man. You know, like me, you said we we met each other, became pretty tight to each other. And I like this, man. I like you giving a platform for entrepreneurs. You're giving a platform for people to be heard. You know what I mean? Um, and like I said, I was telling Chris, man, you know, it's a message. I need to get out there. Mm, you know? Definitely. Firearm you safety. Definitely got You know, them. how you do business. And one of the things I do want to say to up-and-coming Christians that's doing business, first and foremost, be prayerful in it. 
Go to God and ask God how he wants you to run your business. Mm -hmm. Two, be honest with your people, your customers, the people you're serving. Don't tell them one thing and do another thing. Mm -hmm. Also, be the same person you are at home when nobody's looking that you are in that store. Integrity. Working in excellence. People yeah. see you That's what that when is. they don't mm -hmm. see you. First and first thing people say is they see this logo to my, hey, I know you. They know my business and my brand. Because they know my business and my brand, I want me, the person, to represent that business and brand to the best of my ability. Yeah. When Excellent. you hear me, you hear a man of integrity. When you mm -hmm. see me, you want to say, I want you to see a man of integrity. Do I got my faults? Oh, heck yeah, man. Am I perfect? Oh, ask my wife. She'll tell you in a heartbeat or mm -hmm. not. But the bottom line is she knows she got a good man at home. Mm -hmm. And you know in my company and my presence that you see the same quality of man that you get that you'll see at church or out in the public. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a business that model that you want. That's a business model that works. People come to me because they say, hey, my dad told me to come over here. People come to me because, hey, my mom took your class. She told me to come to you. People come to me and say, hey, you know what? Some friends said that they we need to go see my brother's keepers. I got guys bringing their wives in. Baby, this is the man you need to get taught by. Mm -hmm. That's respect. Mm -hmm. That's respect. Hey, mom, come here. Let me show you this man. This is the man that told me about this. That's respect. Teenage boys walking in my stores told me, hey, mm -hmm. we want to get guns. They want mm -hmm. nothing to buy guns. They was 18. Hey, I want to get guns. And I'm listening up here like, okay, why y'all want guns? But when they walked out the store, they were like, thank you, sir. Shake my hand. Or later. Yeah. Shake my <laughs> that's, hand. That's great. Mm -hmm. Because they came in, for one thing, left out with a total understanding yeah. and to respect. Those are lifetime them. customers. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. When they do be able to sell, they're going to walk in. Where's my brother's keepers yeah. at? Yeah. And they're going to tell their kids. And, their kids. and that's mm -hmm. the thing. You want to live that legacy. You want to leave a legacy, man. You know, mm -hmm. if I perish tonight, what they going to say about my brother, Reverend Willie Anderson? Mm -hmm. wow. What they going to say about him? Hey, that's the guy that owned my brother's keepers. Man, I want to hear. I mean, I won't be there, but I want my people around say, "Wow." Yeah. Those who know me say, "Hey, that was a good Christian businessman to follow," and that's what I want. Not in a title. Mm. Not just Christianese. No, I am a man of God that love the Word of God, that preach the Word of God, that stand by the Word of God, and let you know, hey, this is a place you're gonna come and get what you need. Mm. Now. You don't come in my store and I'm sitting there, God said, no, I don't do all that. But I do let you know, hey, this is who I am. And if you ever sit in my class, we open up in prayer. We get in that range, we close in prayer. Because I truly believe that he holds the whole world in his hand and that wisdom education flows through him, from him, through me. And that's what my brother's keeps about, brother. Love that, man. I love that. Oh, you got that. any more questions? No, I was. We can go back to that <laughs> question that you asked before. I mean, I, I think he probably pretty, pretty much answered that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love that. So, what is it? Something else that you would say that you want to leave with the people about guns? Well, or either one of you. I love guns. Man. <laughs> it's, it's literally like watching Jordan dunk for 48 minutes and then like yeah, yeah. We're, we're up by 70 <laughs> points um just go, just go ahead take 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 off the take off the, the pants and ah, you're in the game <laughs> what do you have to add <laughs> um, no I'm I'm going to defer to Rev um like I said right now I'm learning the business I'm actually learning, learning the culture of Michigan you know, and I I feel very blessed at this time in my life to have this man in my life, even though people think he's my father. Definitely, that's 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 respect. <laughs> I come for his father. His clothes too big, that's and his money eat too much. <laughs> but and, and I love that. You know, Chris, we met about um, about two weeks ago. Oh, three, three, three weeks ago. Three weeks ago now, him. yes. And, and he came in the store. Hey, I want to be a CPO trainer. How do I do that? Give me a fact. Made a phone call. And he looked at me like, wow, this dude just made a phone call. Dude, in this world, I don't have competition. That's respect. I was told a long time ago, my customers are going to be my customers. Mm -hmm. So why can't this man get his uh, CPL license and become a trainer? I love that, because that was just my, that was going to be. I knew that was going to be. Place. That's why I asked that question, because <laughs> yeah, well, you usually ask that and question. And, like, and that goes for anyone, anybody that wants to learn how to do it. Hey, I'll point you that direction. That was literally my next question. How do you get involved with what you guys are doing or because like I said I, I went start? to go get guns mm -hmm. I was looking and they were like hey you can send your gun to this person I'm looking online and one person had a house it wasn't even a building it was just a house mm -hmm. and I was like you want me to send my thousand dollar gun I just paid <laughs> to a person house like yeah no I'm gonna send this one to Dunham's mm -hmm. but I ended up sending it there but I'm like this gotta be routes around this 
Well, how do you get involved in what you guys are to doing? To get right your own so? FFL, it's a, it's a little deeper than becoming a CPL license. Okay. Trainer. CPL license trainer, um, the USCCA offer those courses. And um, you can go online and sign up for the course. Um, but I advise you to talk to me first. Okay. Then um, I just add my little experience in it to who I went to mm, right. or who I recommend. Um, you don't have to go that route. Like I said, the USCCA have it right on their website. But I mean, I recommend them because I know these people personally. Okay. Um, saying that to say, um, the FFL is a totally different um, ball of wax. Um, if you walked into my store and you wanted to do one, I ain't got no problem showing you the process. Um, again, dude, I could be the first black gun dealership in Grand Rapids and have more stores. Hey, anybody else can open up a store. Now, if you do decide it, make sure you're doing it the right way because it is federal stuff. Mm-hmm. And one mess up, you can be sent up to ten by federal time. prison. Yeah, yeah, fair time. So no it's, it's a little more deeper time. than that, um, but it's worth it. You know, I mean, I make a pretty decent living from it. This is my full time job: CPL trainer in the nice. gun store, um, and the CPL trainer. We do also. I own a security company. You know, my brothers keep a security company, so we do security. You know, public security, private security. We do that also, um, but again. And so you have businesses within the in the business, yes, sir. That's a whole different. We gonna get you back yeah. up here. And and having that though, it, it gave me the opportunity, like I said, to share my ministry. Also, you know, the presence mm-hmm. of God that's in my life. You know, because again, that's what I'm called to do. All this, mm-hmm. all this, what we call the tent making, is His way of make, giving me the means to make my money. Mm-hmm. The call in my life is ministry. Mm-hmm. This is part of my ministry. I get to see hundreds of people's man. And I let them know right off the back. You're sitting in here, you're captured. God said no. <laughs> but I get to minister. I get to use the touch word of God to touch them and, and, and open them up and say, hey, this is where we at. This is why I do this. This is the reason you want this firearm is not to hurt nobody. It's not to hurt nobody. It's to preserve a life. Mm-hmm. And that life I may be preserving is mine or whoever God put over me or under me. You don't even know how many that you might be because I think um, what you do, who you are, <laughs> It gives you a unique position <clears throat> to actually talk to these young kids who think guns is just so cool who want to go into the gun store. Mm-hmm. So it puts you in the position to be able to, like, they already going to be receptive. You got the guns. Yeah. They listening already because yeah. you got the guns. You know what I mean? Just having what you have inside. And, and it's not just mentality. I, I'm a certain, like I said, a clinical counselor. I work with kids, juvenile detention centers, in out of, in out of jail, private school, behavior school. I did that. That's my credential. That's my background. And, I, and God called me to be a father to the fatherless. So when they walk into my store, like you said, they already see what they want or see something that, oh my God, come over to the home simulator. Let me show you how to use this. That's and I'm putting an AR-15 in their hand for the first time. Mm-hmm. The AR-15 is um, electronic, but it's the real McCoy. So when you're shooting it, you get the blowback and everything, um, just not the noise. But they like, oh my God, do we get to shoot it? And now they're excited. But not only are they excited, they're listening. Mm-hmm. Not only listening, I'm teaching them about the law. But well, son, you can you smelling like that, dude. You been have no firearm in your hand smelling like that. And it's coming from you, yeah. somebody who look like us. Right. And there's no judge. Yeah. There's no judge. You know, one of the kids said to the other brother, <laughs> he said he said something kind of crazy. And he acted like, like, why are you acting so light skinned? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> First time I ever heard that, I start cracking up, man. But, he, but they start joking and clowning because yeah. they felt safe. Mm-hmm. And they felt they could be themselves yeah. and not getting judged. Like, why you young kids want to? You know, no, mm-hmm. you deserve to have one. You have a right to have one. Mm-hmm. Well, let's have it the right way. Anywhere one. else, they'll look at them like a criminal. Yo, get out mm-hmm. of my store. You don't belong in here. Mm-hmm. But in my brother's keepers, like I said, we're not just a gun dealership, man. We are family. Once you become part of my brother's keeper security solution, you're family. You, 3100 is official. You feel me. <laughs> You feel that's what I got. That's one hundred million. There we go. But again, your family, and I just want to leave with this: you have a right to own a firearm. It's your right by the state. It's given to you, saying, "Hey, you got a right to bear arms." Just don't go buy one and have one. Get the education. Even if it ain't with me and my brother's keepers, get the education. Learn how to use it professionally to be able to protect your family and keep yourself safe. You know, because again. It's all right. And all jokes aside, you can't depend on the police to protect you. It's not their job. It's their job to protect the city. It's not, And we just get a byproduct of that because we individuals in the city. 
That's the job. That check says signed by the state or the city of, um, of Grand Rapids. Not signed by Reverend Willie Anderson or signed by any one of us in this room. It's signed by the city of Grand Rapids. I'm a byproduct of being in this city, so if they see a crime, their job is to stop that infraction. Mm -hmm. But they don't have to interfere. If you beating the heck out of me until you stop beating me. Right. Well, think about it. When do the posse come? <clears throat> After they rob the bank. Let's round up a posse. Well, the same thing. That's when the cops come after the fact. Mm -hmm. Being able to protect yourself, being able to be educated, and protect yourselves, and keeping your children safe, teaching, have that education that if I got a firearm in my house, my, my kids, and they understand that this is not a tool, it's a tool. Don't mess with the tool unless you need the tool for that purpose, for that certain purpose, mm -hmm. and that's to survive, protect yourself, or protect the home. Not to go out there and solve a problem with it, because then you have more problems to it. Howdy. I love that, man. Love it. I love it. Yes, at 3100. Mm. Oh, yeah. Tell them where they can find you. Tell them where they can find you on social media, physically, all of that. Well, if you want to be safe, my brother's keepers is the police. My brother's keepers security <laughs> solutions. We located at 3100 Division South, Grand Rapids, Michigan. We also have an online store at shop.mybrotherskeepersecuritysolutions.com. So you go right on the line and shop. You can look online and you can see whatever farm you want. If you order it, it comes right to the store. Um, we have our CPL training classes. We have them every first and second Saturday of the month. You go online and sign up right there also. That's my brother's Keeper Security Solutions. I'm Reverend Willie Anderson, hashtag Red with a Gun. And this is... The guy next to him. <laughs> 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 nah, they want they want to see. Come on, you I'm, 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 I'm the pip into his Jordan. <laughs> and I love Scotty Pippen, boy. Because if he feed me that ball, <laughs> I wouldn't be that Jordan man. Jordan wouldn't have been nothing without that. Him. That wouldn't be that man. So I appreciate him too. What's y'all socials though? What's y'all social medias? My social media, I just have um the Instagram is um my brother's keepers Instagram. Um, the website is on Facebook, also My Brother's Keepers, um, MyBrother'sKeepersSolutions.com. That's the website. You go online and find the company at MyBrother'sKeepersSecuritySolutions.com, you'll find the website. And I am literally not a social media person. That's cool. Uh, yes. Yeah. My Brother's Keepers. I love it. I I told you we have one for the books. Yeah. And my brother's keepers, we appreciate y'all for coming. Thanks for all the knowledge. Thank you guys for having us. Yeah, definitely. Thank, Thank you for the great brother. talk and conversation, guys. And we signing out. Yes. Boom. I love that, man. I appreciate it. That's it. Oh man. Mm -hmm.